today we are going to be finishing our Hardy Boys mystery book called The Missing Mitt. We have chapters 9 and 10 left and we're going to be doing that today. So listen very carefully and remember that you can replay this video as many times as you need and then when you feel like you've got it, then go answer your comprehension questions. It may take more than once and or more than twice for you to fully comprehend everything that happened in two different chapters. All right, let's get started. Chapter nine is titled, Deep in the Outfield. Jason, yelled Frank and Joe, we know where your mitt is. You do? Where? Follow us. The boys took off. They had to see Mr. Mack and get the mitt back from Lucy. Hi again, said Mr. Mack as the boys ran up to him. My, you boys sure are running around a lot. Mr. Mack, said Joe, Lucy took Jason's mitt. What? asked Mr. Mack. Lucy must have thought Jason wanted to play fetch when he threw it down with the rest of the gear. She took it. Oh, no, said Mr. Mack, looking very concerned. I'm so sorry. I'm sure she didn't hurt it. She's very careful with her toys. Bad girl, he said to Lucy. Lucy whimpered guiltily. That's all right, said Jason. I just want to get it back so we can play in the game. Where do you think she put it? Oh, dear, said Mr. Mack. I don't know. She runs too fast for me to keep up with her. She buries sticks and toys out in the woods behind the baseball field, and I don't know where. Only Lucy knows that. Jason, the Hardys, and Mr. Mack all turned to look at Lucy. Lucy whined and put her head between her paws. Frank and Joe had finally found the culprit, but they'd never be able to get her to talk. What are we going to do now? asked Jason. Maybe if you can explain everything, Coach Quinn will let you guys play. But I still won't have my mitt. I can't play without it. We're not giving up yet, said Joe. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to turn the page. I have an idea. Joe ran back toward the ba bandit's dugout, dugout. Where is he going? Asked Mr. Mack. I don't know, said Frank. Joe returned with his own mitt in hand. Mr. Mack, can you untie Lucy? Mr. Mack set Lucy free. Joe held the mitt high in the air above Lucy's head. She jumped up on Joe, trying to get at the mitt. Here, girl, Joe said, go get it. He threw the mitt as hard as he could. Lucy ran a few feet. She jumped in the air and grabbed the mitt with her teeth. Then she took off running past the outfield toward the deep woods. Follow that dog, Joe shouted. Be careful, boys. Good luck, called Mr. Mack as Joe, Frank, and Jason all chased after Lucy. Lucy was fast. First, she ran straight toward the crowd of people watching the game on their picnic blanket. She leaped right over two little kids and nearly knocked over a giant bottle of soda. The boys had no choice but to run right after her, apologizing the whole way. Excuse me, sorry, said Frank. Coming through, said Joe. Jason took one look at the mess made by Lucy, Frank, and Joe and decided to jump over the entire picnic blanket. He took one big leap and landed safely on the other side. Lucy's tail was wagging now. She was enjoying this chase. She stopped for a second, then turned around and looked at the boys. She crouched down on her front legs, the mitt still in her mouth. It looked like she was smiling at them. She waited until the boys got just close enough to grab her. Joe reached out, and Lucy hopped out of his way. Joe stumbled and fell. You all right? asked Frank. Joe nodded. Lucy was sitting there just a few feet away. Frank and Jason both jumped at her at the same time, but again, Lucy dodged out of the way. Thump! Or, sorry, thud. I said thump. Jason and Frank slammed right into each other. They landed in a big heap on the ground. Joe had to help them both up. Lucy barked once, almost dropping the mitt, and then bounded away. She ran straight for the trees. The boys tried to keep up, but their two legs were no match for Lucy's four. We have to keep up, shouted Jason. He put on a burst of speed and managed to pass Frank and Joe. When she got to the edge of the woods, Lucy paused. It was almost as though she was waiting for the boys to reach her. Jason made it first, with Frank and Joe close behind. Lucy slipped in among the trees. Now running was harder. There was roots and rocks everywhere. The boys had to dodge around trees and bushes. Lucy disappeared and reappeared. The boys kept as close to her as they could, but finally Lucy disappeared for good. Where did she go? asked Joe. The boys all stood still and looked around. They couldn't see the dog anywhere. 
Oh, no, said Jason. Shh. Frank held his finger up to his lips. The boys got quiet. In the distance, they could hear the sound of digging. This way. Frank took off running deeper into the woods. He could hear Lucy in front of him, though he couldn't see her yet. Suddenly, the ground disappeared beneath him. Whoa, he shouted. He had reached the edge of a drop in the woods. There was a five-foot deep hole in front of him. He threw his arms out to try to keep his balance, but it was no use. He started to fall. Careful. Jason grabbed the back of Frank's shirt and pulled him away from the edge of the hole. Thanks, said Frank. Look, Joe pointed down into the hole. At the bottom was Lucy, digging the hole deeper. All around her was stuff. Balls and sticks and toys and frisbees in Jason's minute. We found it! Jason shouted. Here is the last chapter, chapter 10, titled Secret File Number 2, A Home Run. Lucy wasn't happy when the boys both took their mitts back, but she didn't try to stop them either. Time to go back to Mr. Mac, girl, said Joe. Lucy barked twice, then she picked up a stick and ran back toward the field. Good girl, called, J called Jason. Now that he had his lucky mitt back, he was happy again and ready to go play. Do you think the game is still going on, asked Jason. Will we make it back in time? Hmm, said Frank. The average batter takes two minutes. There are usually five batters on each side for every inning. I would say there should be two innings left. Awesome, yelled Joe. Let's go. The boys ran out of the woods as fast as they could. This time, they ran straight through the bushes. All they cared about was getting back as soon as possible. When they got out, Mr. Mack was waiting for them with Lucy beside him. Did you find your mitt? He asked. Yes. All three boys shouted at the same time. They kept running. When they made it back to the baseball diamond, the Jupiters were leaving the field. Uh-oh, said Jason. Are we too late? The boys ran over to Coach Quinn. Is the game over? Asked Jason. No, but I'm afraid it's not going so well. We're down four runs, and there are only two innings left. Where did you boys go? Frank and Joe found my mitt, said Jason. Lucy stole it. That's great news, said Coach Quinn. But who's Lucy? She looked out at the players of the two teams. That's Lucy, said Joe, pointing over to the bleachers where Mr. Mack and Lucy were sitting. She thought Jason was playing fetch, Frank explained. So she grabbed the mitt and buried it in the woods with her other toys. So you boys really were just trying to find Jason's mitt? I guess I owe you an apology. How about I give it to you after we get ready to play? It's the top of the sixth, and the team needs you. The three boys cheered. Wait, said Jason. There's something I have to do first. Jason walked over to where the Jupiters were sitting. He went right up to Connor Hounds. They talked for a few minutes, and then they shook hands. Jason came back over to Joe, Frank, and Coach Quinn. I had to apologize for accusing him of stealing, Jason said. That's very grown up of you, Jason, said the coach. I'm proud to have you on the bandits. She shook his hand too. Then a big smile lit up Jason's face. And I also said I'm sorry that we're totally going to beat them. Even Coach Quinn had to laugh at that. When the rest of the bandits saw Joe, Frank, and Jason getting ready to play, they gave a huge cheer, and so did the crowd. The Bandits fans had given up on their team winning, but now they were excited again. Coach Quinn is letting you guys play? That's awesome. We're totally going to win now. I can't wait to write this all up in my blog tonight. This has been the most exciting game ever. Speedy was talking so fast, it was almost impossible to understand a word she was saying. The boys would have to check out her blog tomorrow to find out. The sixth inning was about to start. Frank took back the catcher's gear and got suited up. Jason took his regular place on first base, and Joe went back to second. Now there were no more holes in the outfield for the Jupiters to aim for. The first three Jupiters up at bat were knocked out one after another. Speedy struck out one. Jason tagged another, and Frank caught a foul ball hit by the third. Now it was the Bandits' turn at bat. With a little luck, they could narrow the score. In the bottom of the inning, Jason, Frank, and Joe were the first three batters up. Bam! 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 Jason slammed a double, and Frank followed with a home run. Just like that, the Bandits had scored two runs. On his turn, Joe had a line drive into the outfield. Now he was on third base, waiting for a chance to score another. It was 8-6. The Bandits were still behind, but they were catching up. 
Speedy batted next. The Jupiters were expecting a big hit to try to score another run, but Speedy tricked them. She bunted. Before they could figure out what to do, Jason was safe at home and Speedy was on first base, eight to seven. Speedy stole second base while the Jupiter struck out the next bandit batter. A lucky catch knocked out another bandit, but Speedy managed to get to third base. Go, Speedy, go, Speedy, go, Speedy, the crowd chanted. She smiled and waved, but waiting for her chance to score another run for the bandits. The next batter got a hit and tried to make it to second, but was tagged out but not before Speedy crossed home plate. Now the score was tied, 8-8, and there was only one inning to go. Do you think we can do it? Coach Quinn asked the team. Yeah, the bandits shouted. They were in this to win. The Jupiters batted at the top of the seventh. Speedy struck out the first two batters, and then it was Connor's turn at bat. He took a few practice swings. He looked bigger than ever. Frank crouched down in his catcher's gear and hoped that Speedy would strike him out too, but no such luck. He hit a hard ground ball on his first swing. The ball was headed right between first and second base. Joe and Jason both ran to get it. Go, Joe! screamed Frank. Joe leaned down to get the ball, but Jason got there first. He swooped the ball up with one swipe of his lucky mitt and ran back to first base, but it was too late. Connor was safe. It took two more batters, but eventually the Jupiters brought Connor home. Now they were ahead, 9-8. to eight. The Bandits had only one chance left to win the game, but the Jupiters were not going to go down easy. They struck out the Bandits' first two batters in the bottom of the seventh. Now everything depended on their next batter, Jason. The crowd chanted his name. Frank and Joe sat on the edge of the bench, leaning forward for a better view. Jason bent his knees and pulled the bat back behind his shoulder in a perfect batting stance. The first pitch came. Jason swung and missed. Strike one, the umpire called. The Bandits fans shouted, Go, Jason! Jason got back into position. The second pitch came. Again, he swung, and again, he missed. This time, the crowd was silent. If he missed again, it was all over. The Bandits would lose this year's Little League Championship. Time seemed to slow down as the Jupiter's pitcher got ready. He wound up. He threw. The ball seemed to hang in the air. Jason pulled the bat back. Crack! Just like that, the ball was flying up over the heads of the Jupiters, past the outfield, over the parents and their picnic basket blankets. Up, up, and away. Joe, Frank, and the rest of the bandits leaped to their feet, cheering and screaming. It was a home run. The score was tied at 9-9, and tied it remained. No matter how hard they tried, neither team could score another run. The game went into extra innings, and then extra, extra innings. Finally, the coaches called a timeout. Maybe it's time to call it a tie, Coach Quinn said. The bandits thought about it. It would mean sharing the trophy, but the Jupiters were good players. Maybe just as good as they were. Maybe both teams deserve to win. What do you guys think? asked Coach Quinn. Should we declare the tie? Yeah, said Joe and Frank at the same time. That seemed fair. The rest of the bandits nodded in agreement. You guys are the best team a coach could have, she said. When the two coaches announced the tie, everyone in the audience cheered. This was the best Little League champion game ever. Championship game ever. When Joe and Frank returned home, they were exhausted, but they still had one thing left to finish. The boys waited until their parents were safely inside, and they made a dash for their treehouse. They passed the side of the house and the garage, above which Mr. Hardy had been fixing up for a spare room. Watch out, Frank called. There was a ladder leaning up against the garage, and Frank's warning came out just in time to save Joe from tripping over it. Jump! warned Joe, and Frank just missed tripping over a couple of paint cans that were lying outside, probably for the spare room. When the boys reached the woods on the edge of their backyard, they looked and a, they looked around figuratively and ducked in. Finally, they reached their destination. Frank pulled the ladder down from the treehouse with a pulley so they could climb in. Once they were both inside, Frank handed Joe a big green marker. I got to do it. I got to do it last time, Frank said. It's your turn. Joe's face exploded into a grin, and he walked over to the big, white, dry erase board hanging on the treehouse wall. Then he began writing. 
Secret Files case number two, solved.